Well, in baseball, they say when you have pitching, go out and get some more. And it kind of can be true for defensive linemen. And so that is what Minnesota decided to go out and do. They go out and get Yannick Ngakwe, even though I think that their defensive line, specifically their edge rushers, were fine. Obviously, Hunter is a monster, and I actually like Ndegabo a good amount. Uh, but clearly, uh, they wanted an upgrade, and Yannick Ngakwe is quite the upgrade. One of the things that makes Ngakwe so good is his speed. He has a great speed rush, one of the better speed rush guys in the league. Uh, and really the key for good speed rush is like on this play, where he's going up one-on-one -on -one against New York Jets' left tackle. Uh, and basically, what you're going to do is what you would expect with the term speed rush. You're using your quickness uh, right away to try and get past the tackle. And so watch how he sort of runs to the outside a little bit. The tackle is going to create some contact, of course. You're not going to be able to just completely run around him unless, you know, you ran like 20 yards back down the field, which, of course, you would not want to do. For a tackle, ideally, you'd want to get your outside hand onto the outside shoulder. So in this case, uh, 75 would want to get his left hand onto Ngakwe's right shoulder pad. That's kind of what you would want to do. Uh, but it's hard to do that with the speed rush because you run so far to the outside. Now, there is a disadvantage to this as well. Obviously, the advantage is that uh, your opposing tackle can't get the hand placement he wants. But the disadvantage is that the angle has now shifted. If you're a tackle going up against a speed rush, at this point, you don't have to worry too much about just trying to stop him in his tracks. In fact, you shouldn't try to do that. That would be a bad idea. What you should try to do instead is just sort of push Ngakwe behind your quarterback. Your quarterback can step up in the pocket, maybe even run to the left side of the screen now because the containment could have been lost. Uh, so that's what you're trying to do here for if you're a New York Jets tackle. And that's why there really are two key parts of a speed rush. The first, of course, is just getting to your spot quickly, but the second of which is making sure that you're strong enough to not get moved. And Ngakwe is strong enough. Watch how he's able to hang on and he's able to get just enough contact that Darnold does end up going down. Uh, again, not exactly your typical sack on that one. But, you know, the fact that he's, uh, I think that the speed is really impressive there. And also, it, he is a very difficult guy to move. A speed rush is really, really effective. Because, for one thing, you know, obviously you're getting sacks. Uh, but it can result in a lot more than that. Like, especially if a quarterback just takes a step or two further back than he was supposed to, which is very easy to do. It can result in sacks, and also the speed rush results in a lot more uh, hitting the throwing hand, which can result in a lot more fumbles. Like right here, he's going up a one-on-one -on -one against uh, you know, a Tennessee player, 71 right there, uh, and Gakwe is lined up on the edge. He is going to try to run around him, and watch how he is able to knock the ball out. You know, Tannehill just never saw him, and again... Uh, you know, like uh, the tackle who's going up against him, 71, he's doing what you're kind of supposed to do. He's trying to n make sure he doesn't uh, get beat by Ngakwe and have him just run straight to Tannehill. He's trying to push him behind Tannehill, but he just didn't quite get him fully behind Tannehill. And it looks like Tannehill, they might not have been on the same page. The Tennessee tackle appeared to believe that uh, Tannehill wasn't going to be as far back, which was also partially why that resulted in a fumble. Now, if you look at Ngakwe's statistics, they aren't quite as good as uh, you might actually think. Uh, he has 37 and a half sacks over four years, which isn't bad by any means, but it's also not necessarily, uh, you know, elite or anything like that. For comparison, Hunter, uh, he's had 29 sacks in just the past two years, so only, you know, a little bit less in half the time. Uh, of course, I don't think anyone is expecting Ngakwe to be as good as Hunter, but just kind of, you know, statistically, that's where he's at. Uh, I actually think he's a little bit better than his statistics show, though. I mean, don't get me wrong, 10 sacks a season is nothing to sneeze at, but, like, take a look at this play, for example. He's going up one-on-one, -on -one, uh, again, once again, against uh, our good friend, 75 of the Jets. You're going to see him pull off a, a sort of a jump move where he basically fakes it, though he might be going a little bit closer to the inside, but he's going to jump at the last second, basically try to get his right hand onto the left side of the New York Jets player and get over. This is, you know, you see Aaron Donald do this a lot. He does it from the inside, of course, but similar type move. And watch how well he's able to pull this off. He's able to just just fool that New York player enough that he is does have the footwork to move around, does start to fall down, uh, but is able to get the sack on Darnold. Uh, and again, that's just a really good footwork play. I think the one reason he might not actually get as many sacks, though, as uh, you might think when you watch some of these plays is because I actually think that his footwork can be very inconsistent. And I think that uh, it kind of can struggle, uh, you know, he can struggle sometimes on really pulling off 
these fancy moves. He was able to do that first part of play really well, but then he fell down. This is another good example where he's going up one-on-one -on -one against a Houston right tackle right here. This is Titus Howard. Uh, he had a really good rookie season. And uh, anyways, what's going to happen is that uh, you're going to see Ngakwe. He's going to kind of start as though he's going to be doing like a stab and grab move where he gets his uh, right hand, puts it on uh, Howard, and then tries to grab his left hand and move in that direction. So Howard, he's getting ready to try to, uh, you know, move his right hand out of the way. Typically on a stab and grab move, you don't want to allow Ngakwe to grab your hand, but you also have to try to get it, uh, you know, blocked. So you kind of want to keep it down right now. That's the way Ngakwe is doing this. And so this is going to be a fake. Ngakwe is then just going to try to run straight over there, uh, which makes some sense, I think. But watch again. He's going to fall down as trying to make this play. He still generates some pressure, and Watson somehow still makes the throw, which is just the most Deshaun Watson thing ever. But uh, my real thing about uh, this play, and obviously I'm choosing an extreme example, but I do kind of feel like this could be uh, a bit of a way of saying this might be why he hasn't taken that next step and had a 14-and-a-half sack season like you see Hunter consistently getting is because he sometimes struggles on some of these more advanced moves, and I think that's kind of a problem. One thing I would like to see him do a bit more of is something like this, where this time he's going up one-on-one, -on -one, this time against Houston's left tackle. And what you're going to see Ngakwe do is that, uh, so with this one-on-one -on -one matchup, you know, he likes to use his speed rush, so that's something that uh, 77 is going to have in his head. Uh, and so what Ngakwe is going to do is he's going to simply just uh, use that to his advantage. He's going to try a swipe move where he's going to take a couple steps in that direction, gets his left arm, you know, try to swipe the uh, tackle's right uh, arm sort of out of the way. That will prevent his assigned man from getting the contact he or getting the hand placement he wants. He runs through the gap and gets to Watson. That's what he's going to try and do here. And he pulls it off very well. Uh, Watson got rid of the ball before it uh, mattered. Uh, and again, makes a completion. Watson very good under pressure. That's another takeaway from this video. Uh, but also, I think that was, again, I would like to see him do more of that. Because I think he's he can be really good at that sometimes. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like... I feel like he will make those obvious mistakes. Uh, again, sort of the fancy pass rush moves he can have a little bit of trouble with. But at the end of the day, if you have one move that can work consistently, it's not that important to have those B moves. But if you want to become one of the greats, you have to get one of those B moves. But even without it, I mean, he's still a consistent 10 sack guy uh, who has a move that's really difficult to stop. So yeah, I like the player. Now let's talk about the move a little bit. I'll just give my general thoughts. The film study is over now, so if that's all you came for, feel free to check out. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I think that I'm, I'm, I don't love this move from the Jaguars perspective, uh, just in the sense that I don't like how to handle this whole situation. Don't get me wrong, I have no problem with wanting to trade a guy, and it seems like he didn't want to be there, so... Uh, you know, it seems like it makes sense to get rid of him, but I feel like they just waited way too long to make this move, where now, at this point, the deadline has passed for Ngakwe to be, uh, you know, to uh, work out some sort of long-term extension, so Minnesota, they're not going to pay a first-round pick for him because they're not sure if they can get a long-term extension, so the second-round pick and a conditional fifth that could be a third is pretty much all they're willing to give up for him. I feel like if they made this trade earlier, there at least would have been more leverage. I mean, I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe just teams didn't want to go out and pay too much for him. I mean, they're obviously not going to pay Clowney, so why give up assets to get Ngakwe? But at the same time, I mean, I guess the flip side is uh, you did still get uh, decent value. A second-round pick isn't bad, although it is kind of a— I think it's probably going to be a, you know in the second half of the second round as well. So, again, not all second-round second, second picks are equal— uh, and the Vikings, I think, are, I think they're a playoff caliber team, especially now with this move. I still don't love their cornerback uh, situation, but, you know, hey, it's going to be more, they don't have to be, uh, they don't have to keep people uh, not open for too long now because they have Ngakwe and Hunter and they, the quarterbacks won't have m much time to throw. So from Minnesota's perspective, I, I do kind of feel like, uh, I, I don't know, I think I like this move. I don't think they gave up too much. I think that a second round pick, you can deal with that for a rental, even if it is just a rental. Uh, I think that, you know, a second and third, that's not a great rental, or even a second and fifth, that's a, it's a bit much for a rental, but he is a very good player, and I don't think it's a full rental. I think they would like to re-sign him, but at the same time, it's not quite like a, a Jalen Ramsey situation where Ngakwe now has all the leverage to work out some sort of long-term deal, because, uh, you know, they haven't given up so much that, like, if he did walk this offseason, it, it would be a bummer. It wouldn't be devastating. I mean, you literally saw the exact same thing happen with Clowney. Uh, just last year. So we have that to compare it to. 
So yeah, that's kind of where I stand. I, I, I think at this point, I do like the move from both sides. I feel like I, I, if I'm a Jaguars fan, I would have wished they could have handled it a bit better and gotten more value earlier, but maybe they couldn't have gotten more value. Maybe they wanted a first round pick, couldn't get it. And so this was the first team that offered them a second. I don't know. It's impossible to say. So I'm just speculating. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.